Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Centrifugal pumps, parallel pumps operation, do it right or else In this video course, you will learn where do you need parallel pump operation, analysis of parallel pump operation, how to select the right pump for parallel running, consequences of wrong choice, checks for installing new pump in existing pump system. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. Parallel pumps. Centrifugal pumps may be arranged in parallel or in series depending on the process requirements. Pumps are installed in parallel when the user wants to improve the reliability of the pumping system. When a single pump for the full capacity is selected and installed, there is likelihood of the planned operation to come to halt when the pump fails. To avoid any disturbance to the plant operation, it is general practice to install two similar pumps in parallel instead of one large pump. This also provides the flexibility to match the flows to the plant load. Two pumps in parallel running can handle a range of flows at higher efficiency than a single pump. Typically, parallel pumps are used in utility services where the volume flow rate of utilities such as cooling water is very high. Cooling water system supplies to cooling water to various coolers and condensers in the process plants as well as other utility services such as refrigeration units. For example, let us consider a process plant which has three production units. The three units have several coolers and condensers which need cooling water. The cooling water requirement for each of these units add up to 500 meter cube per hour, 700 meter cube per hour and 300 cubic meter per hour respectively. The total cooling water requirement for the three units is 1500 cubic meter per hour. For this plant, what is the best pump scheme you can select and what ground You have two options to choose from, Scheme A and Scheme B. Scheme A has a single pump delivering the total flow of 1500 cubic meter per hour. Scheme B that has two smaller pumps, each delivering 750 meter cube per hour, which supplies a total of 1500 cubic meter per hour to the plant. Obviously, you should select the Scheme B, because in the case of Scheme A, if the running pump fails, cooling water supply to the plant is totally stopped and it will affect the operation of the all the three units and the units will have to be stopped. Instead, if you select scheme B, even if one pump fails, other one will be running and the plant will continue to get 750 cubic meter per hour. You can reduce the plant load temporarily and need not stop all the production units. The probability of both the pumps failing at the same time is extremely low. Thus the reliability of the pump system will be better with the two smaller pumps. A typical parallel pump schematic is shown in the figure below in which two pumps share a common section and pump into a common delivery system. Note that each pump is provided with its own check valve. This is to prevent the reverse flow from the delivery piping when the delivery pressure is higher than the discharge pressure of a pump. Selection of pumps for parallel scheme needs careful evaluation of the pump characteristics. The pumps installed in parallel works well without any problem if their characteristics curves are the similar and both develop the same shutoff head. Shutoff head is the head developed by the pump with the discharge wall closed. Let us consider two pumps A and B which have similar characteristic curves. The capacity and head developed by the pump A and B are 
qa equal to qb is equal to q1 and hca equal to hb is equal to h1. The total capacity of the pump, parallel pump system a plus b equal to qa plus b equal to qa plus qb. This figure depicts the characteristic curve of the two pumps A and B. At H, H is equal to H1, the pump A and B each deliver the flow rate of Q1. The overall characteristic curve for the pumps in parallel configuration is obtained by adding the capacity of each pump at constant H. Before we move on, I would like to make a call to my dear viewers. Your Spec eLearn channel is one stop learning and skill development destination for your career needs. Get instant access to useful career oriented subjects and become knowledgeable and competent. So do not forget to subscribe. Please press the subscribe button now. Sometimes the two pumps A and B have characteristic curve different in shape but have the same shutoff head as shown in the figure below. In this case, pump A develops head H1 at flow Q1 and pump B develops head H1 at flow Q2. You can select pumps with similar characteristic curve or different curves but with same shutoff head for stable parallel pump operation. Let us now analyze the parallel pump running with pump A and pump B. Both pumps have exactly the same shape of curve with the same shutoff head. When the two pumps A and B are operated in parallel mode, the combined capacity Q2 is fixed by the operating point obtained by the intersection of the combined pump characteristic curve and the system head curve as depicted in the figure below. Note that the combined capacity delivered to the system by the two pumps running parallel is not necessarily double the capacity of the individual pump. As the flow increases, the system resistance also increases and the shape of the system curve changes. The shape of the system curve determines the actual capacity. As the flow increases from Q1 to Q2, the system head increases from H1 to H2. The two pumps in parallel operation will deliver to the system a total flow equal to Q2, which is less than 2 times Q1. Now consider a situation where the system demand decreases from Q2 to Q1 or lower. The flow has become less than or equal to the capacity of either pump A or pump B. The situation can be handled in two ways. One option is to stop one of the pumps and continue to meet the system demand of Q1 with the other pump. The second option is to keep the two pumps operating and throttle the delivery flow control valve to meet the low flow demand. How the system curve will change and how the pump will adjust to the new situation is explained in the figure next. In the second option, the system head will increase to H3 or more depending on whether the flow is Q1 or less. The pumps A and B will shift to this new operating point and deliver the flow to the system. Single pump operation for low load situation is generally preferred because it has several advantages including higher efficiency and considerable longer life. Single pump operation near its best efficiency consumes less input power than the running both the pumps at low flow. It also permits maintenance and repair of the pump that is taken out of service, taking advantage of the low flow operation. However, one must be cautious while running single pump in a system designed for parallel operation. The single pump will usually or tend to operate at flow rates higher than its design value. The driver may tend to get overloaded. Therefore, the driver size and NPS is required but must be accounted for at this operating condition.
parallel pump operation, pump A and B have different head flow curve and shut off heads. Consider the situation of parallel operation of two pumps with the different head flow curves. What will happen to the pumps when the system demand drops below a certain minimum value? This figure depicts individual head flow curve of two dissimilar pump and the combined curve for the parallel system. The pump A develops shut off head HA and pump B develops much larger shut off head HB. These two pumps operating in the system against the head of H1 will deliver flows Q1 and Q2 respectively, meeting the total system flow demand of Q3. The combined pump operation will deliver maximum flow of Q4 at system head of H4. Full load operation does not present any problem with the two pumps sharing the load. But at low loads, dissimilar pumps can create problems in load sharing. As the system flow demand decreases progressively, discharge throttling produces new system head curves as shown. See the broken line curve in the figure. Pump B begins to deliver a larger percentage of the overall system flow, creating an imbalance in load sharing. As system flow demand reduces to Q5, the system head due to valve throttling increases to H5. The pump B delivers entire flow. The new system head H5 has exceeded the shutoff head HA of the pump A. Hence, pump A backs off the pumping system, being unable to meet the new operating condition. The pump A is now operating below its minimum flow, which is very dangerous to the pump because, as mentioned earlier, the pump will overheat and suffer internal damage. The pump seals will also get damaged. The above discussion on parallel pump operation leads us to summarize the following for a successful operation. 1. Select pumps with more or less similar head flow curves with within required operating range. 2. System head must never exceed head dead minimum flow of any pump throughout the operating range. 3. Caution must be taken to avoid operating at so low flow rate that one pump can overpressure the other pump, making it to run almost at shut off condition. Installing a minimum flow bypass line can prevent this situation. Checks for installing a new pump in the existing parallel pump system. Many times the plant has been in existence for a few years. At the time of plant construction, the engineering company would have designed the pump system for a single pump operation with a standby pump for redundancy. The company is now planning for expanding the plant capacity. In this scenario, several pumps in the main process plant and in utility section may experience bottleneck in capacity. Often, the characteristics of the existing pumps are not studied and compared with the new pump under consideration. It is at this time mistakes occur in selecting the pumps with the right characteristics. Hence, the user has to be cautious in selecting the pump to avoid the problems associated with pumps having unequal heads. Select pump with similar characteristic curves and same shut off head. Select right and free yourself from the pump operational issues. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of 
care your and professional students thank you for watching